Hey everybody, it's Chuck -a Conroy, and I'm free! Ahem, welcome back to more Corona Trigger. Last time, we finished up at the Lost Sanctum, and this time, we continue through our second journey. We are now in the final hour before challenging Lavos, where we can go around taking care of all those different side quests that each of the party members wanted to do. So we're gonna transition from talking about something bad about the new version of Chrono Trigger to something bad about the original version. A very key instrumental reason why I chose the DS version for this playthrough over any other version. I didn't go with the PC release because it's missing a lot of little bits of content that I've detailed along the way. The biggest reason why I didn't choose the Super Nintendo original, however, this line from Gaspar is such a strong example of why the original translation was not something that I wanted to present the game with. It is a good script, it was very, very good for the time especially, and I'm not going to say that it's a horrible translation by any means, I really stand by what I say that as long as you don't pick the PS1 version, you can't choose wrong with whatever version of Chrono Trigger you're experiencing. But this line in particular, Speak to your companions. Some among them may well know the figures behind the events which I have seen. The way that this was translated in the original was, one of you is close to someone who needs help. Find this person fast. It's just merely telling you that your party members need help with certain things and that you can talk to them in order to do that. So you can see how it might have been mistranslated that way. Due to the generic wording of this and the seriousness of fast, People assumed that there was something big that they just hadn't found, like some side quest to save Shala from the Ocean Palace incident. There's no such thing. And it drove people mad that after they did enough stuff, eventually he just stopped saying this line because you had no more side quests left to do. There's a lot of little lines that outright mislead the player, and that's why I didn't pick it. People give the localization director a lot of grief over the original script for having inaccuracies or depending on who you ask, condescending writing, but I don't think that's entirely fair. Without naming any names, the localization director for Chrono Trigger was given less than two months to write all the text in the game, and then was forcibly halted right then and there. The rest of the time spent in the localization process was spent changing names to fit within the memory limitations and shortening the length of the entire script by half to fit within other limitations. How good do you think you would be at taking a novel originally written in another language, shortening its length in text by half, and keeping the original meaning? I think they did a good job with what was given to them, and the flaws are more fault of a rushed project than actually poor writing. But still, you can see why I didn't pick it. Now that we're moving on, yo, I want to show that trick that I told you about all that time ago. I just realized these flames are called prominence. <laughs> That's what it looks like for all of you who wanted to know. Termination looks like save points, prominence looks like fire. Magus' black hole will remove fake ones from existence and it keeps the real one from not disappearing. Meaning that we know with double normal- Oh, no. Well, poopy. <laughs> I was trying to show you something cool, I just didn't succeed. It was just a chance of failure, that's all it was. Doing this, the process of weeding out the correct flame is a very simple one. Magus got a level up too. He deserved that for being such a good boy and finding the secret of the Son of Sun. It just sounds so wrong when I say it to Magus, but when I say it to Robo, despite him being even bulkier and tougher looking, it just feels right. Slightly related. They call him Gato, he has metal joints. Several people wanted me to show what happens if Black Hole is used against Gato. He didn't like that idea very much. He revolted against his creator. The robots are taking over. We must banish them to another dimension. He pointed his finger to take him away to that other, oh. <laughs> and Luca just got more of a pummeling in the face. Magus is being a dick to her on like two levels. Banishing her creation to another dimension, and also she's getting punched in the face for it. Um, this can work. I know that it does.
I just came to realize this is exactly the reason why. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. 10 experience. <laughs> As the sequence of events continues going on further, I realize our ability to travel through time and dimensions and everything is a lot less special and unique. I anyway, I was saying that, um, <laughs> crap, what was I saying? <laughs> Oh, the Magus's black hole is totally why late game enemies in this last act never walk around and move like Gato does. Otherwise, every enemy could in theory be hurt by it. That's why that happens. Robo's quest in the genocide dome, pulling no punches in what I call it now because you know what it's called, <laughs> has a few points of interest as well. Robo's name Prometheus is symbolic of his relationship with his creator defying Mother Brain and providing the power that she gave him to humans. It's similar to the relationship between Prometheus and Zeus in Greek mythology. Atropos is also from Greek mythology, being one of the three fates. Her role was ending lives and was known for being inflexible and unchanging. Atropos earlier in development was purple, referencing Greek mythology in the color of face you would be after she had taken your life. My memory banks. I must have... Yes, when Mother overwrote my old programs. I, I backed up my memory. I'm sorry, Prometheus. Save your energy. I'll repair. You cannot. Core systems failing. Power t to memory banks critical. Atropos, I want you to have this. You can plug it into your circuits. Please take care of it. Goodbye, Prometheus. A small detail to be sure, but Luca will try to repair Atropos if present in the party. Robo can get Atropos's ribbon every time you go around New Game Plus again, permanently increasing his stats every time. He's now got Star Star and all of the pertinent stats. Never forgetting how to do that one again. Oh my god. Cleverly thought out puzzles and dungeon design. Interesting lore. Enemies not respawning every time you leave the room. That's right, this game is awesome. I almost forgot. Robo's inexpensive screen nuke in the form of laser spin is still helpful this late in. Something purely outside my memory banks. I was trying to sound cool when saying I didn't know something, okay? <laughs> Uh, something that I was not aware of at all. <laughs> there you go. Much, much easier and much better. The running wild without display status that I warned you about all that time ago in this fight? We're gonna wipe out all the displays right on the first turn. And get that started. I never lig- Not a lig. I never lived long enough to see this, but if you wait a long time with her doing this running wild without displays thing- Wow, she does not do anything to us anymore. <laughs> Here I thought I was gonna have to have a party that was outfitted for healing, because she always hit me for hundreds of damage no matter how good my stats were, but I guess we're just that overpowered now. I'd heard from multiple people that running wild without displays is supposed to wear off after a while. I've been here for 10 minutes or so, waiting for it to wear off, healing myself, maybe even bopping her a few times for good measure in case it's based on damage, and nothing. I haven't been able to get this to wear off at all, so I'm wondering if maybe this is just an untrue myth that's been passed around. Ah! <laughs> I was here so long that I realized, hey, wait a minute, can I do the frog thing? Yup, you can! <sighs> I've been here for 40 minutes! I had to kill it by doing 50 damage a turn when it has 5,000 HP. Took 100 turns on my part, and it was getting to attack at least two or three times for every time I got to attack once. There's no way that it has any sort of instructions to end the running wild without display status. I don't believe that exists. With the way that this game stores data, if it had instructions to do anything on a turn number, it would have had to do it before it attacked for the 255th time, and it definitely attacked me more than that. Okay, 
Well, at least now we know. At least we can put another myth to rest. That's what's important to me. I had nothing new to say about Frog's quest, but Winton got the fully powered Masamune anyway due to his new equipment. In the original translation, these guys were officially named Dumb and Dumber. I kind of miss it. Nothing can break the bonds of blood, neither distance nor words of anger. Someday you will leave the nest and have children of your own. Then you will understand the truth of what I say. Blood is the sap that flows through the limbs of a family tree, and come what may in the future days, we will forever be joined by that. Queen Guardia the 21st, Lean. Oh, leave nest. Ayla no leave nest. Dacta leave nest. Time pass, get big, leave nest. Mara leave nest too, big change. Leave nest, have baby, give milk, have more baby! That wasn't in the Super Nintendo version! Music still literally ruined forever! Atoning for my past transgressions, I'm gonna charm Yakra the 13th and get his piece of equipment at long last! White plates! Didn't have one of those. Uh, oh, Luca's confused. That would explain why her turn just kind of got skipped there. Sorry about your courtroom, Daddy. Fiona's class. Uh, Fiona's class. Fiona's quest. She's going to teach you all about how to save the genocide of the trees. Uh, Fiona's quest is the final one that we will be doing and the last one that I want to talk about. And it's for some pretty small details at that. For one, here's proof that you are not screwed. Burn it, it's a mercy. <laughs> Plant it with, how oddly specific and cruel sounding and not out of Magus's lips. I was going to say there's proof that you're not screwed if you tell her to burn it or you don't say anything to her up in Zeal Kingdom. She will still listen to you here. I'm all about the transgressions today. I got transgressions coming out of my ears, transgressions between my bones, transgressions on the roof. I own DLC for transgressions I don't even own. It's my very special way of saying that I'm going to steal the items from this guy this time around because I don't want to miss out. There, was that so hard? Kiss his pelvis! At least it was happy about it. When you'd rather kiss a pelvis than a face. Speed capsule! There she is! It's been a while since Robo presented his theory about where these gates actually came from. I didn't want to say anything about it in the moment out of not wanting to spoil where things were going or what the ending to the story might be like. So how about we relax by the fire and I'll tell you about many fascinating things that make this story so much bigger. First of all, Gaspar, at this point, after completing all the quests, was originally intended to be the eighth party member. This concept never got very far but here's what he would have looked like after taking off his cap and joining the group. He would have fought using his cane as a staff, which I think is pretty awesome. It would have been great having this guy who guided you throughout this entire journey as somewhat of a mentor finally come with you when you were off to go to the last battle. I can see why they didn't do it because it's kind of already hard enough getting Magus's tech list filled out. Heck, I'm struggling to do it in time. So I understand, but it's still a very cool piece of trivia. In the Japanese version, his line about bearing witness to the world's fate was instead, this is a battle between the planet and Lavos. And that's meant to confirm exactly what the entity that Robo was referring to is. It's possible that it could be a god, but many theorize over whether the planet itself is a real living being 
and it could be it reliving painful memories of the past before it dies, causing the time gates to appear. It's showing you its tragic life and what Lavos is. Some have interpreted the entity as the player, since they're responsible for this journey taking the course that it does, and the outcome is fully within their hands, taking many different possible paths, but the player is not the one responsible for the creation of time gates. The entity may be powerful, but it's not mightier than Lavos. It couldn't just get rid of Lavos because it already lost, and Lavos was able to feed off its power. The two of them are evenly matched in the sense that they both have the ability to travel through time, but when Lavos is feeding off the life force of the entity, you can see how the entity would lose and would not be able to just get rid of Lavos on its own. A way of interpreting these events that I find very beautiful and that I wanted to share with you was that the entity found help in these kids because they were kids. They had the curiosity and the sense for adventure that would let them uncover everything that they did. This was all a guided tour of the planet's tragic history, and it's led us to this. While not directly related to the events, I wanted to point out that Magus sleeps with his cape as a blanket. <laughs> I like to think that maybe he had this blanket from when he was a kid and just kept it all this time and it's another remnant of his last life. The sound in this section is so eerie, it's an auditory illusion that makes it sound like things are continuously getting higher pitched even though it's not possible to do that. It's a similar technique used in other eerie moments like the Endless Staircase in Mario 64 and I just want to draw attention to it. Did you ever notice in the Black Omen how this was supposed promised eternal life to all the people of Zeal and yet every life form that you actually see in there except for Queen Zeal herself is some kind of freaky mutant and she's there all by herself? It's kind of disturbing and it's never elaborated on further which I think makes it even more disturbing. Something I promise you we will never get to see is Specchio's final form. He has one last transformation. At level 99, he turns into a new. <laughs> because of course, all life begins and ends with new, don't you know? This is by far the most difficult battle in the base game. And the reward should match. Should match. He gives you 10 power tabs, 10 speed tabs, and 10 magic tabs. Currently, I'm roughly level 70 across the board, and you can see that we all have star star speed. I have star star strength on anyone that I remotely care about having it, and our magic stats are the only things that I think wouldn't be at star star by the time we're level 99 anyway. And even then, probably just on Ayla and maybe Frog, it's... Robo 2, I guess, Chrono. It's not that, it's not that good of a reward. The magic tabs are all I would care about because they're very few and far between otherwise, as hinted by our stats. So, not that great. As for strategy, if you are playing the DS version, without a doubt, bring Luca into the fight with the Elemental Aegis. This makes her unable to lose because he can only use magical attacks. Otherwise, if you're trying to not be cheap or just playing the Super Nintendo original, Green Dreams and Auto Revive is generally the way to go because of how much damage he's outputting that your 999 HP is practically irrelevant. There's one other thing unlocked at level 99, and I'm saving that because, as strange as it sounds, I think we might actually get a decent chance to show off at least part of that. Veteran should know what I'm talking about. Lavos is shrouded in a lot of mystery. As I've said before, he may not even be evil and is just an alien parasite instinctively surviving and following its life cycle with the planet's life essentially being its natural prey. It's never explained specifically where Lavos is actually from. He's merely an alien. It's possible that Lavos himself was birthed from another of his kind, ruining another planet, since it seems to be nothing more than its natural life cycle to ruin a planet so it can reproduce. Its only clear desire was to give birth to many offspring that would continue this cycle anew on other planets. Perhaps Lavos' kind was created to be living weapons and was just simply uncontrollable to its creators. Another theory is that it may be under the control of a galactic federation to achieve galactic conquest by snuffing out all potential civilizations that one day might become competing empires. 
Regardless of where it came from, Lavos has no true name that we know of. If it even has one. I have nothing to add about the fight itself, so let's cut to my failed attempt at the final boss fight, like I said I would show you eventually. And Luca, I guess shoot it with a wonder shot because that could very conceivably get the kill. I'm starting to like this thing, actually. It's another one of those things that I'm gaining an appreciation for. Temporal so Oh no, oh no, that's bad. That's really bad. We need to kill the center bit in yesterday. <laughs> 65 million BC is, in my opinion, the most threatening of all the time periods. This is where he's able to hit for random damage. He can do physical damage to the entire party, and it hits in the 900s, possibly. I can't think of any worse thing that I'd rather, you know, not get him. Oh, there it is! Ultimate physical attack! Oh, gosh. Okay, it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it would be, but wow, that's bad! Uh, okay. Temporal show. Okay, at least he's out of it, so he's not gonna do it again right away. Um, okay. Um, I need an Athenian water on Marl. Reviving the pods. Okay, we're not gonna get in much damage this rotation, but it's fine if we don't die. Unholy light slow. That's gonna hit Chrono, because he's the only one around. At least Marl's not getting hit by it, because she's dead. That's it. As a final point, listen to Lavo's course theme with headphones on if you haven't already. Trust me, it really enhances the experience. I believe that means that we have seen every single thing that I wanted to do around the world. So, I now pose a question to you. Aside from the post-game exclusive Dimensional Vortex, which is what we're tackling next, what is not already in this Let's Play that you think should be? I've covered every comment that I've personally seen of things that I didn't do. Every bit of miscellaneous information that I already knew that just didn't really have a good place in the main series. And all of the other DS exclusive content as much as I cared to cover it. Anything that I've missed, I'd love to hear. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we enter the void. See you guys then.